Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Sheen Andrews, and I am the director of the Northeastern PA Interest Group hosting this meeting today. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Amit Gar. Amit is the founder and director of Upside Learning. Upside Learning was founded in 2004 and is working with clients globally as a preferred outsource e-learning development partner. Their mantra is to improve business performance through better e-learning. Over the years, they have prided themselves in de developing great long-term relationships with their clients. They continue to leverage that and they see this as their strategic advantage in the market. Some of their solutions include e-learning, mobile learning, ILTs, games and gamification, interactive videos, and so forth. Amit's key role in the company is providing strategic guidance, business development, and overseeing operations, finance, and marketing. In today's session, we'll focus on some key trends in workplace learning in general. Then we'll take a minute to dive deeper into two key trends mobile and micro learning to learn how and where to use them in learning initiatives. At the end of the pre presentation, they will take a moment to share of some of the samples of what Upside Learning is doing today. Before I hand it off to Amit, I also would like to recognize that Amit was recently named as one of the fiscal year FY17's movers and shakers in the e-learning industry. So, Congratulations to Amit. Thank you again for joining us today. And I'm going to hand it off to him. Uh, thank you so much, Shane. Uh, thank you for that introduction and uh, for inviting me for this talk today. So honored to be here uh, sharing thoughts and ideas about what we have been doing for a few years and hoping to learn from all the participants as well based on their experiences. So first of all, uh, are you able to hear us all right? If you're not, please use the chat window. You can select all panelists and attendees if you want to share it with everyone, or if just with the panelists, you can do that as well. And another housekeeping thing before we get started is that we'll be recording this session. So you will get a recording. Uh, give us a couple of days to you know just uh, clean it out before we send it. There is already a hand raised. Uh, Linda, Linda, do you want to uh, say something? Do you want to chat, put it in the chat window? Um, it, um, some of our attendees are mentioning that the volume is a little bit of an issue. All right. How's this? Is this any better? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you for raising that. And hopefully we can now get started. So uh, just those two things, we'll be recording this. So you'll get a recording after we're done with this session. So just give us a day or two to uh, you know, just brush it up and remove all the silent bits, et cetera. Uh, and also, please feel free to ask questions through the chat window. Uh, anytime during the presentation, we'll look at that window frequently and try and answer those questions. And we'll try and keep some time at the end as well. All right. So let's get started. I know uh, we are here for just an hour, and I think we have quite a bit to cover today. So let's get started. So just a quick bit about ourselves, and I'll not take more than a couple of minutes introducing Upside Learning for some of you who've not heard about us. We've been in business for 14 years, as Sheen just mentioned. Uh, we work with over 200 different uh, clients around the world. Uh, most of these clients uh, come from airlines, BFSI industry, that's banking, finance, uh, pharma, uh, and manufacturing majorly. Our key markets include the US, uh, UK, Australia, Singapore, uh, and a couple of regions in the Middle East, the UAE, and Qatar specifically. We do a little bit of business in India, but it's not, not a key market. In terms of offerings, we do uh, Custom e-learning as our main offering, and then right from instructor-led training to translation services, anything and everything that comes in that. So, of course, as you can see, I'll not read that out. Uh, just a quick bit on our journey in the mobile learning space, so that you know you can 
appreciate uh, what we have been doing over the years. So we started offering mobile learning services in year 2008, uh, shortly after the, the iPhone arrived and uh, clients started asking for that. I can today say it was very sketchy, very preliminary, uh, not really good uh, mobile learning, but it was good learning experience in those days to begin with that. In 2010, we launched a mobile LMS. So we have always had an LMS as one of our offerings. This was a companion offering to our LMS. It could work as a standalone thing. And then we kind of uh, also offered it as a combined thing to, to a lot of our clients. Uh, but it wasn't really a product that would really carry too far. We realized our clients were really moving on to a single system. So we merged a lot of its features into our LMS itself, which became responsive. In 2013, we were probably one of the earliest uh, companies to have a responsive authoring tool. We called it FRED, uh, Framework for Responsive E-Learning Design and Development. So uh, why this is significant is because we invested a lot of time and energy to come up with a framework when the tools, the authoring tools themselves were not responsive. So it did give us uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, leeway uh, and, and a lot of, uh, you know, kind of tailwind to help our clients uh, do responsive e-learning when there was no real tool available in the market. To this day, we do some uh, responsive e-learning development, even mobile learning development using this framework, especially when our clients don't have any particular preference on, on, a, on a particular tool. So in 2017, we launched an ebook which was comparing all the authoring tools in the responsive uh, e-learning space. So there were six or seven that we compared, uh, the Articulate, uh, Captivate, Lectora, Adapt, Evolve, Elucidat, Gomo, you know, all, all of them. And we really created a comparison uh, document which helped our clients uh, uh, choose wisely which tool would really meet their needs and it still remains a good resource we recently updated it if you if you care for that you may just download that from our website also we've tried to contribute to our community by sponsoring some reports and, and the focus has largely been on the mobile in last few years these have been with astd towards maturity and brandon hall all right so that's that's really uh, about us uh, we are, of course, going to discuss, uh, you know, uh, what are the key trends that are there in the market today in our space, and then we'll dive a little deeper into mobile and micro. And, of course, so we'll try and show you some samples of work that we have done for our clients more recently. Before we get there, I'd like to take a moment where if you can share what's your experience been in the mobile and micro learning space. Have you experienced anything in mobile micro? Have you created anything? Whatever you want, please share through the chat window, of course. All right, no experience, Linda, all right. Anybody who has experienced micro? All right, okay. So uh, have you been to YouTube recently with uh, something where you may have, uh, you know, you might be doing something at home and you got stuck. Uh, maybe something with DIY or, you know, something that got broken, you wanted to fix it. Maybe the speakers were not working. Maybe the, you know, the oven was not doing. Maybe you bought something new and you wanted to get started and you went to YouTube to get help. How many of you have done that? Fantastic. So why, why are we talking of uh, YouTube is because uh, I think YouTube is one of the most prominent uh, micro learning example. That's, uh, 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 that's something that we have all experienced. You know, uh, I'll tell you a short uh, incident that happened. I was there in US last uh, month, actually uh, in January end in, in San Jose where there was a ATD conference and we were exhibiting. And on the day prior to the event, we had to set up our stall so that the uh, whole stand came in with uh, instruction booklet or a, or a leaflet rather. 
and we looked at it we were really not able to make sense of it we quickly went to youtube we encountered a couple of not so relevant videos you know they were for different kinds of stands but then very quickly within 5 minutes we were able to reach the kind of video that we were looking for and in 2 minutes we were really able to understand how to set that stand up which part goes in where what to be tightened first how to extend it how to make it look good etc everything and that's micro learning so why i'm trying to mention that is because if you've experienced that you have actually understood the basics of mobile and micro personally and that's very very important so if you've done that it will give you a lot of confidence when you are creating any mobile or micro for your staff all right great ah <laughs> uh, condensing larger training into smaller modules uh, is absolutely not the right way and we'll probably look at some of those aspects as we discuss in in our session today let's let's move ahead okay so we wanted to discuss about the trends that are there in in the space and what better than uh, you know getting trends for one person to get it from 57 of them uh there is this video created by e learning art which summarizes the trends that have been uh listed by some of these 57 experts in our field i'll i'll like to play that clip quickly and then maybe not fully but then uh summarize it
All right, so I'll pause that there. That covers uh, all the top trends. And I'll request you to, to uh, pick which ones you really think are the trends that you are experiencing. Uh, or if you think anything was missed out in those that were listed, which you think is a trend that, that you are seeing. All right, one trend is attending a gamification gamification element to mobile learning absolutely i think uh, mobile does present itself to uh, a lot of opportunities really a lot of opportunities and uh, i think we will see more in in our uh, session today how all right so we'll we'll move forward uh, if if there are any more inputs that come in we'll pick them up uh, okay so uh, I'll just list all of those which were uh, listed in that uh, video uh, sequentially from one to nine, of course, in reverse order. Micro learning, of course, is at number one. Uh, it is one of the biggest trends this year. So essentially everybody is talking about it. But when I think about these trends, micro learning, video, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, Mobile, uh, mobile learning or mobile in general, XAPI, BR, science-based learning, which is essentially busting the myths and doing things based on proper science rather than uh, things that have been uh, going on for ages, like learning styles, etc. And performance support, personalized learning, subscription. All of these, to me, most of them actually revolve around mobile. So mobile is really powering most of these trends you know uh, to me that is really really surprising that mobile is the one which is really powering all of these so x api is uh, is uh, experience api when it was started it was called tin can and it is the next version of uh, scom in a way it aims uh, you know very ambitiously to capture all our experiences. And it essentially says all our experiences are learning experiences. So we should capture them, whether they are emanating from our LMS or uh, not, whether we're doing it in a classroom, whether it is a book that you read, whether it is a video that you saw somewhere, whether it is a coaching session that you delivered, whether you mentored someone, you know, everything. So the as I said, it is ambitious. It tries to capture all your life experiences and use that as your profile rather than the completions that you do in an LMS. So, but it does present a lot of wonderful opportunities that can be leveraged. I personally believe XAPI is the one which can transform LND. You know, it can really move LND closer to the business uh, performance. Uh, if, if it can be applied uh, properly. It is powerful. It is not easy, if I can say. But yes, if you want to begin, you can begin a little small with XAPI. But I think it is very, very powerful. Move on from here. I'll just add a few more, which is uh, uh, micro, or all of those that were really listed. I see mobile to be at the center of all of them. So let's, let's get into, you know, uh, mobile learning i before we really talk about mobile learning per se let's look at some of the key things which either define mobile learning or are crucial to our understanding of mobile learning uh, work itself is changing now uh, according to this uh, uh, book by robert kelly you know the amount of information that your workers need to hold in their heads has sharply declined from about 75% in 1986 to about 8 to 10% in 2006. And that's a huge change. And it's, it's just kind of supporting the fact that workers have moved on from the manufacturing age to the information age, and they have, they are no more, uh, you know, less of blue collared workers, they are becoming knowledge workers, they are becoming concept workers. Also, the technology has changed. So the access to information has become easier and hence keeping it in your head is, is rather a waste of effort and energy. So it's a, it's a combination of factors, you know, uh, the kind of environment we work in, 
the kind of jobs we do, etc. But this is what uh, you know the research has been quoting, and that this should have huge implications on how we design training. What do we want to teach? How much do we want to teach? Should we give only just the necessary bits and let them look for? the actual task aids later when they need it because they will in any case not remember it so there is there is uh, a bit of uh, you know hint here which might be for us to think about how to design uh, our training programs there's also this shift and you may have observed it or experienced it or at least heard that training is shifting more towards performance support and consequently courses are moving towards resources you know, so you you don't really you obviously see courses being created, but then there are increasing instances of uh, companies creating shorter resources, make them available, let the learners find uh, the ones that they need. They will keep tracking what type of resources are being used more often, etc. And that's the kind of analytics they are going for. But yes, I think with the and again. Mobile is probably the biggest enabler of that, that you can provide effective performance support to almost any kind of roles uh, that you can then maybe reduce your reliance on training. So there is this movement that we are seeing from training to performance support and from courses to resources. This is a very interesting uh, bit of uh, observation that uh, mobile technology is probably the first one which has been adopted first in the consumer space and then in the corporate space. Everything else that came before that, the telephone, the fax machine, the computer, the printer, answering machine, everything was really adopted in the corporate space and then it moved to the consumer space. But mobile, it's actually been adopted in the consumer space first and then it has moved to the corporate space. And that it too has its own implications. You know, we found uh, uh, the IT departments and, and uh, other, other HR departments, everybody's struggling to make policies around how integrate a mobile in the workplace. You know, what kind of policies, BYODs, you know, and, and uh, there have been numerous stories of people using their mobiles in, in, in workplaces for work uh, when companies have just not had policies and similar is the challenge that the companies are still facing as as the social rises and mobile really uh, enables the the interactions that their employees are having with the outside world on linkedin on facebook and everywhere else so i think this is one technology which has kind of stumped uh, corporates if i can call it uh, because we've had so many instances where clients have said Oh, we've created a lot of this learning and we never knew that we'll have to redo this because it has to go into the into the into the consumer space some of them say oh my ceo has got an ipad now this is slightly old because uh, you know this was probably three four five years ago when they would say let's make it html because my ceo has an ipad and we know that we might suddenly be asked why doesn't it work on my ipad so those kind of things have happened so i think it's it's interesting uh, it also fits in very well with the example that we were just discussing when we started our session today about your experience with micro learning. So you have experienced micro and mobile in your personal lives, even if you may not have experienced it in your corporate lives. But that is exactly the experience that you want to carry to the corporate space because your, cons your, your staff, your learners are already using it in their personal lives. They're getting used to it. They see value in it. And hence, you uh, know, as a corollary, they would not see value in other stuff. So it's 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 like you know how they are getting used to this kind of learning and the environment. Another bit of interesting observation, and this is from a research which says that we probably touch our phones two thousand six hundred and seventeen times per day on an average, and that is in seventy six uh, sessions of under two minute each. Now, what's very interesting here is we don't reach to our mobile phones for uh, normally for 5, 10, 20 minute sessions unless we are going to watch uh, a movie. You know, if you're traveling and you want to watch something on Netflix or, or maybe uh, on, even on YouTube, longish videos, yes. But during a work day, you would probably be uh, using it 
like this. And this is an important bit of uh, understanding that we need to have that mobile are not meant for longish sessions in general. So unless we have created a very strong motivation, uh, you know, where learners will go and watch 20, 30 minute things or do those kind of, uh, you know, courses on mobile, I think it's safe to assume that we should keep it short. Okay. So, you know, and I'm sure you've experienced this. Mobile is really all about getting stuff done. You know, so you would uh, go to your mobile to check news, check weather, check email, check maybe train station, train status. Uh, uh, you may watch some short videos, you know, uh, you may connect on WhatsApp, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, check your banking apps. Uh, you may book a cab, you may even shop. But essentially, you are doing activities which are short, quick, purposeful. You're just kind of getting stuff done most of the times. And that's really mobile is all about. So that's a very, very important characteristic that we need to keep in mind when we're designing anything for mobile. And this is a fantastic quote from Clark Quinn. Where, and this is very early. This is not something that he said now. This was said, I think, in 2009 or 10 where he said, M learning is about augmenting our learning and performance, you know, and to look at, look back on this, uh, that was said so many years ago, it's almost, you know, prophetic. So mobile learning is really not substituting our other learnings, it's augmenting. And more importantly, not just learning, but performance. And that's, that's crucial to remember as we create things. Another important aspect that we should definitely keep in mind is the mobile context. Like this uh, technician, you know, uh, what kind of uh, mobile uh, learning, if you want to call that, would we be able to, you know, suggest for someone like this? Do you have any thoughts? Safe climbing practices? Perfect. Uh, how would you like to deliver that? You know, if it is mobile learning, it's going to be a video, it's going to be a course with the next back button. Uh, what, what, what do you think we can do? How to use this harness with mobile video? If I can just uh, 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 remind you, if you choose uh, to send your chats to all panelists and participants, attendees, everybody would be able to see what you're typing. Thank you. All right. Any other thoughts? All right, while someone else types in, yes, I think a video is a great idea, which uh, hopefully the person does uh, watch before uh, he starts uh, uh, using or climbing, you know, or ties the harness just to teach them while they are yet not there. If they need instructions when they are really hanging in there, I think a voice based module would be best where the the module itself can take instructions, uh, you know, based on voice. So they can say next, next, and maybe something can play based on that. Or it can just continue to guide in a very slow manner where it's like an IVR. It keeps on checking, you know, uh, do you want to move to the next? Do you want to move to the next or just complete the stages? So that could be one. When, or if let's assume one hand is going to be, you know, free, we can possibly create something which is easy enough to be done with one hand. So what I'm trying to highlight is mobile context is extremely useful uh, you know, when we're designing uh, for mobile because people will be using it in, in many different situations and we need to really cater to uh, what kind of situations they will be in. If that worker needs a video to fix a problem at the top of the pole, he needs to have both feet on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay uh, here's another video and i really want you to take a look at that this is very very interesting amit can you please turn up the audio We need to enable our people to use the latest technology possible and available and phonograms is such a device where we see potential to serve our customers better 
The introduction of HoloLens to our operations will empower the over 20,000 field service engineers in doing the job better, more efficient. Increasing availability of elevators and escalators makes the job more safe and more fun for all people. The scenario we have developed is really about dispatching a service technician using HoloLens in very different kind of ways. So as soon as the technician puts on his HoloLens, he already sees, I have a call here, I need to go to this elevator, and then actually sees a 3D picture of the elevator that he's going to work on, and that he can zoom into a part that will offer you also training opportunities. He goes to the job site prepared, probably better prepared than ever before, because he has the relevant data available to him in the best format possible. And in a variety of ways, he can tailor the data towards his need. The technician putting on his HoloLens, looking at the elevator, sees the historical notes first. So what has actually happened with this elevator before? He already has all the information right there without having to look for it. It saves a lot of time and a lot of stress and effort. gets information on his virtual desktop about the task orders he has to carry out, the latest safety alerts, or that elevator. He pulls on a 3D replication of that part, pulls it out in an exploded view, and can actually see which part is making the problem. A major advantage of the HoloLens, of course, is that they are hands-free, and we never had the experience and the capability before. In the past, the technician needed both of his hands to operate the laptop, and now he just has his HoloLens on. One of the most important capabilities we see with HoloLens is that we can trigger a remote call to a subject matter expert. Oh, Heather. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing? I'm uh, replacing a doorboard out here, but I kind of want you to check a couple things out. Okay, let me take a look. The JP3 is in the right position and your motor is disconnected, so you're good to go. It takes a lot of stress out, saves a lot of time, and our field tests have shown that there's a huge potential to increase productivity. The job, which normally takes one to two hours, and maybe ends up with having the export traveling to the site, we were able to carry it out on the third. I'll just cut it short there. It just uh, presents a wonderful world of performance support that is really coming up. Uh, hopefully soon. Uh, so I, I, I'm really, you know, uh, very, very excited by uh, something like this. All right. So we were here. Okay. So there's another element which is very interesting, which is that mobile also enables uh, informal and social learning. This is uh, a, a a kind of graphic that we pulled out from Bursin Associates, where they say mobile can act as an enabler for your on-demand uh, learning, which is the simple one. But for social, it can be an accelerator, and it could really be a transformational opportunity when you really do high-end stuff. And we saw one example, though it is not uh, mobile, mobile, but it is certainly a wearable device that we just saw. And it will uh, essentially be counted in, in your mobile device categories. Uh, so what does mobile learning really include? You know, you can do responsive e-learning, which is uh, uh, essentially creating e-learning in such a way that it can work on all sorts of devices, whether it is a desktop, it's a, it's a uh, you know, tablet or a mobile phone. It just uh, automatically adjusts. Uh, and this has been the, the go-to method for a lot of uh, companies to get started with mobile learning. But yes, there is a, a caveat that you can't really create something which is responsive and imagine that uh, learners will be able to do a 30-minute course on their mobile phones. Just because it is available on mobile, it does not mean it is optimized for mobile. So when you're creating responsive and you think mobile is going to be an important device on which uh, your learners are going to access it, it's best to make it mobile first. Uh, short courses, micro learning, you know, uh, absolutely. That is exactly what we were trying to uh, emphasize on by sharing all the uh, usage patterns and uh, how mobile is really fitting into our lives and how we are using it personally. Video animated videos is just uh, one form of media that you can use. It can be used in short courses and micro learning as well. PDFs and ebooks for reference is an interesting one, which uh, not uh, everybody uh, uh, thinks of as a suitable mobile learning opportunity, but, but it is 
And we have an example from Coca-Cola on that where you know you can store those pdfs on your mobile phones and just look up the relevant sections when you need it so you don't have to download the pdf uh, when you need it just keep some uh, necessary pdfs on your mobile phones and refer to exact sections when you need it uh, performance support just in time again an overlap with short courses and micro learning as well as videos animated videos user generated content is uh, probably going to be used uh, more often as we you know go along uh, the idea here is to really capture the knowledge that your experienced and best performers have in their heads by uh, helping them create stuff which can help others teach others solve others queries etc so creating more of a, a you know platform where people can ask questions and answer those and people can learn from each other but most important thing over here is of course it's about the culture of the organization if you can build that sort of culture mobile can really power that user generated content which can capture all the knowledge that your best performers are having in their heads offline apps is a great opportunity especially for people who are on the go sales people who are traveling and they may want to keep stuff on their phone download it and do it when they are on their flight or if you have workers who who are uh, working in locations which do not have good coverage, uh, maybe they don't have good bandwidth at home, and they don't want to, you know, uh, even uh, get into data payment issues. So yeah, they can download stuff at office and then do it at home, etc. Those kind of things, you know, there could be various different scenarios in which offline apps could be used. And X API based tracking. We talked a little bit about X API, but X API, as I mentioned earlier, is very powerful. And uh, you know, as we go along, we'll probably find better ways to leverage that, that power of X API. All right, so that's that's about mobile. I'm not showing any samples right now. We'll just pick up all the samples once we finish the, the micro one. So micro learning, actually, it happens in micro moments, and uh, this is uh, being uh, propagated as a concept by Google. And I'm not playing this video because we've lost some time. But this is about you know, when things go wrong or you've just realized you've made up your mind, uh, it's like a DIY thing that we just uh, discussed about uh, when we reach out to YouTube and find something quickly in, in the moment of need. To be fair, I think micro moments is a, is a glamorous term that Google has invented. This link all its services, how they are being used and how it helps you. But at the same time, uh, these are something that Gottfriedson has kind of already listed for learning you know there are these five moments of learning need when you're trying to remember some i'm just going to the last three when you're trying to remember something when things change when something has gone wrong you want help on that that is when you go to a, a mentor a coach uh, a source where you can search something maybe a knowledge repository and these days possibly to google maybe to youtube by default the last three are absolutely suitable for mobile learning but with clever planning and you know, uh, strategy, we can also do or uh, include mobile for the first two. And we, we will have one example where we can possibly look at that. But the micro moments is, is uh, just to re-emphasize, it's just a glamorous term to those moments of need. Of course, Google has been clever on that. Another important bit, which might be very relevant for micro learning is the Ebbinghaus curve of uh, forgetting. Of course, you can reverse it a bit by making it a learning curve if you are able to support with spaced learning events, which essentially means uh, uh, repetitions which you can deliver over a period of time. And that really helps your learners practice, revisit the same concepts again, try it out in, the, in, in different situations, etc. And that firms up their learning. And all of this can be done through uh, micro learning pieces that you can schedule for them. All right. So, what does micro learning really mean? You know, that's a very very <laughs> complex uh, area to get into. If you if you search for micro learning definition, I'm sure you'll find uh, at least a dozen of them. You talk to anybody, and they'll have their own de own definition of micro learning. So, for that, I would essentially get into you know characterizing micro learning rather than defining. It is most often small bite sized but very focused you know so it could be 1 minute it could be 2 minutes it could be 5 minutes but i would like to draw the line there you know 
unless you really have reasons to believe that your staff can pick up 10 minute things uh, as as micro learning great but a good general rule should be about five minutes is the upper limit two to three minutes is ideal the key part is of course and i think uh, sheen mentioned that some of the vendors really crushing or slicing a, a bigger program into a smaller program and saying this is micro learning that probably may not be true i think there are two key aspects that needs to be applied one is if you look at from the lens of mobile first you end up creating something which is absolutely core to what you want to teach or what you want the uh, user or the learner to do after going through that chunk so it is focusing on one bit one task one thing and that makes it very very powerful so if people can search it and reach that bit in the moment of need it just helps them do that job better uh, it is not just videos and we'll see on the next slide what all can be included in micro learning but videos are the uh, the default choice these days it is it carries so much more information and so much more details that cannot be included in any other medium so if you can do videos great uh, but then uh, you know you can of course use other things as well depending on what your needs are uh, very critical it has to be easily accessible you don't want uh, somebody to really put two minutes to search for the right uh, nugget uh, just to learn for two minutes so searching time two minutes and learning time two minutes will feel like a lot of frustratingly uh, wasted time over, over that two minute learning or help so it has to be easily accessible uh, most often it would be used as performance support uh, it could be either push or pull pull is uh, obvious when it is performance support and somebody is in a moment of need and they're looking for something that they want and they can search for it and get to that in push you are essentially creating a program or a campaign uh, around uh, something uh, maybe an objective you have let's say compliance training and you're drawing up an elaborate campaign which has a lot of components of micro learning but you are pushing them out as per your schedule it usually happens in micro moments which is also similar to the godfredson's moments of need and space learning is is one of the more powerful concepts in micro learning you can use it as pre post event activity so for e-learning or a classroom training event, you can use micro learning to get them prepared, ready, refreshed for whatever they have learned in past. And after the event, you can support with summaries, uh, some application scenarios, quizzes, whatever. So you can extend that program. And very importantly, it's not just for millennials. You know, some uh, people have been talking about that millennials have a uh, a very short attention spans and hence micro learning works best for them uh, 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 strangely enough the, the attention span theories about decreasing attention spans have been debunked and uh, i think we all have uh, equally small attention spans if they are at all small so i don't think it just applies to millennials so they, that may not be the right reason but there are reasons which we have discussed for which we should be using micro learning now just quickly to what all elements can you use videos flashcards animations augmented reality we saw an example we could use scenario quizzes we could use infographics ebooks checklist text text is very very interesting you know uh, i'm not sure if you've heard of uh, uh, this text to baby.org i think that's really the the link uh, I'll, I'll type it in if, if I get the right link, I think it is that. It is essentially for pregnant mothers where they can get uh, text help uh, on their mobile phones once they uh, you know, uh, give the due dates. And accordingly, every day or every week, they'll be getting advice on, on what they should be doing. There's another one which is very interesting, which is called Vobot. It's a chat application for mental health. So it's you know you can log in and it keeps talking to you and you can get some help there so there's a lot that you can do with text as well i i will i will uh, comic strip is uh, another way that you can get in and pdfs so these are some of those elements and i'm once again i'm just conscious that we are probably reaching the end of our time 
we have two minutes, but at this time, if I can just uh, thank you everyone who's joined in, we will continue for another five, seven minutes to show you quickly some of the samples. But if you have to drop off because you have another meeting lined up or something else, uh, please feel free. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we will be uh, recording this, so we will send it out to you uh, after we have cleaned it up. So once again, thank you. And, and I'll continue with, with some of the samples that we have lined up for you. Okay, so here's the first one, which is true performance support, uh, uses a video and a QR code. This has been done for a company called Zangro in, in the UK, where they make a lot of cleaning agents and uh, you know their staff could be uh, transferred from one role to another or from one site to another. Hence, they might be using different type of agents for different type of surfaces or different purposes. They may not be really trained on that. So a good easy way was to really create uh, product user guides as videos, which could be launched by scanning a QR code printed on the bottle itself. So essentially you, you point your phone to the bottle it launches a video on how to use that particular product it's a one minute video in most cases so that's a that's a good uh, a way to really access the relevant information just in time this is a ios application which was created for calculating the cable sizes for electricians when they go for fitting a certain kind of equipments so this was done for a for a, a college where they wanted to create this as for the apprentices. Uh, so there are five steps in this. You keep filling the information. It also refers to various charts and tables in the backdrop, uh, in the background, and picks up values from there to gives you solutions. And you can save those for future reference, etc. Uh, this one is uh, 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 actually uh, the one on the left is is the uh, application for the launch of Toyota Yaris in the UK. It was used uh, by the participants who would have attended that session where when it was launched, they could have interacted with the vehicle quickly without anybody's help. And there were five or six different sections and you could have done it in about 10 minutes and known, uh, get to know about the vehicle uh, very well. Here is this ADL's uh, M-Learning Guide, which has been uh, created, uh, which also is quite helpful. Uh, interestingly, of course, it is mobile learning guide and it is available on a mobile phone as almost ebook this is again an interactive video in a you know kind of giving you experience of a robbery prevention situation you need to press the the alarm icon uh, if you notice something which uh, you are supposed to notice in this video which is essentially you are trying to identify what are the threads what are bad and good responses exhibited by the various actors in that situation so you press the alarm, the three options open up, you choose one of them, and if you've choose a, chosen the right one, it gives you points. So essentially, it kind of uh, lets you experience the situation and select uh, as you go through that. This is a very interesting, responsive e-learning project, which was done for World Bank, and it was a Brandon Hall Award winner last year. This is about uh, writing skills, and the way it has been constructed is that if you were to do the whole of it, it's about 30 minutes. But if you were to just go straight to assessments, you can do it in 10 minutes. And that's why it works on all devices. The reason was that the, the World Bank had people at different levels who would obviously not be at the same level of competence. Some of them would just want to do the assessment and say, yes, I'm done with it. I know this very well. So they can quickly do it even on their phones. This is another example. This has been created in the Articulate Rise, which is for tablets and uh, mobile phones. It's a simple program between 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, okay for mobile learning, especially if you're doing it on tablets. Uh, but yes, because they wanted to provide an alternative uh, and let some of them do on, on mobile phones as well. This is the example I was talking of uh, earlier, which is the ebook where uh, this was provided as uh, something that the learners can store on their phones and uh, refer to when they... All right. So this is the last bit, which is about the, the uh, campaign that I was talking of. So everything else that we uh, sh you know, showed you till now was really bits of mobile learning and micro learning, uh, mixture of that. Some were, some were five minutes, some were more than that. 
but this one is a good planned use of micro learning for uh, changing behaviors. So I think micro learning could be very useful for either performance support or for spaced uh, learning to change behaviors. Now, this is very interesting because this uh, project is actually the requirement is to create a simple e learning for slip, trips, and falls. But instead of doing one e learning, the proposal that we have with the client now, which they have agreed the first stage, is to create a campaign. The campaign is going to have four phases building up, and I'll go to the other phases. And within that first phase, there is a teaser that kind of you know it's almost like an advertising so you get interest uh, you know generated uh, you can have endorsement necessarily after that where somebody senior uh, probably the senior most comes in and says this is very important we want you to focus on this then you have a direct message for call and involvement to the supervisors and then there is some preparatory mini learning nuggets of five minutes each now, this is the build up phase. The second phase, when you actually roll out the program, you are doing familiarization, you're again doing some expert endorsement at maybe a slightly lower level than the, than the one that we used in the first phase. You're also doing some floor activities, and then you're doing some mini learning nuggets. In the ingraining phase, you are reinforcing, you're bringing in community leaders, you're doing floor activities. And you are again having some micro learning nuggets being sent out every uh, week. And in the last phase, which is maturing, you have cultural adoption. Again, some endorsement, which is probably going to say what's been successful, etc. Some few floor activities and a few more uh, intra organizational awareness things. You know, infomercials, one minute each. So essentially wrapping up the campaign. Now, this itself is going to be about six to seven months uh, in, in overall plan. But I think that's where uh, micro learning can be really powerfully used if we were to create some good campaigns around it. All right, with that, I think uh, I have covered what I had to. Uh, let me quickly look at any questions you may have typed in. Or if you have any questions, please go ahead and type in. Yeah, the, the language learning, I think uh, Duolingo is a fantastic example. You know, it ju you just have to give two to five minutes a day and it, it keeps on uh, adding more stuff based on uh, you know what what you have learned so far etc thank you very much uh, i can only see a number 7782 thanks for your appreciation well without further ado i do want to thank you all for joining us um, and then there were two <laughs> we appreciate we appreciate you stay, staying with us and we know that we did go over and there were some technical difficulties but I hope the content was useful to all of you. Again, note that Amit and Upside Learning have been kind enough to um, allow us to see the recording of this video after the fact. So again, thank you all for joining us and thank you, Amit, for the presentation. My pleasure, Shin. Thank you so much for organizing this and thank you everyone for joining.